guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing the medical tag. If you are new, hey, my name is Danny, and I am an OBGYN resident. Um, I would love to have you subscribe down below uh, and come back to my channel for more videos about medicine, women's health, lifestyle, fashion, and many other things. Um, you can also follow me on social media and I will link the links down below where you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, and usually I'm more active on Instagram, so if you want to know what I'm up to day to day, follow me on Instagram because that's where I am the most active. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I first saw this tag being done by Jenny Lee and she is a family med resident who also has a, vlo a blog and uh, a YouTube channel. Um, she has been much more active than I have been um, since she was in medical school. I have been pretty on and off because, you know, I, I love doing this and I love blogging and doing videos, but sometimes there's only so much that you can do in a day. So I kind of just come on and off, but I, I really, really want to try and be more um, proactive and more organized and try to do things that I enjoy doing to kind of help with all the stress of residency. So I'm going to be doing the medical tag and I have the questions right here in my phone. So the first question is, who are you? What is your name and age? So like I said, I am Jannie and I am 27 right now. Um, and I am an OBGYN resident in my second year. When did you start studying medicine or pre-med courses? So I took pre-med courses kind of when I was in college and I knew that I wanted to do medicine since high school, my last two years of high school. So when I was in college, I did a major in cellular molecular biology and that includes courses like biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, biochemistry etc. And those courses are basically the pre-med courses that you need to be able to get into medical school. Um, so that's pretty much when I started taking those courses. And I started college in 2010. I graduated in 2014 and that's when I started medical school in 2014 to 2018. And then in 2018 I started my residency in obstetrics and gynecology. What made you choose the medical field? So this is a tricky question and I actually answered this a lot during my interviews. People ask me why I chose OBGYN or why I chose medicine and the truth is it, it kind of always was a part of me. I just didn't know it until I was actually on my residency interview trail. So um, when I was in high school, I went to this um, course, not like, like course, it was like a leadership program over the summer for high school students who were interested in medicine or biological sciences. And they took us to the hospital and I was just taken away. Um, we visited Leahy Clinic and I got to be in scrubs and in the OR for the first time in my life. I have some really silly pictures, I'll try to insert them in the video probably in this corner right here. Um, but yeah, um, they, it, that was my first experience doing sutures and doing um, like patient cases and things like that and I, that's what made me be sure of my decision. Um, during that time as well, I remember that we were presented with a documentary done by Lisa Russell. She is a doc documentary video producer and filmmaker. And it was about women in Nigeria, Niger, and other countries in Africa that suffer from obstetric fistula. And that's when there is a tunnel that connects the bladder to the vagina. And they have urinary incontinence. And even though I didn't see it at that time, and I didn't see it during medical school, I saw it when I was doing my... Um, OBGYN interviews that that's really when I already had like this peak interest into women's health. Um, so that's kind of how it all got started and solidified in my youth. How did you come up with your blog name or username? So my blog started um, in my second year of medical school. 
Um, it was December and I was feeling very overwhelmed. I didn't have any hobbies aside from cooking every once in a while. And I wanted to find something that helped me keep my mind off med school and everything that I had to do and was fun and enjoying um, for me. So I started, somehow I landed in a blog and then landed in YouTube and that's how kind of things got started. And I'm really bad at creating um, like usernames or um, coming up with like a really fun name for a, my, my cat, it's going crazy. Um, coming up with names for like a blog or a page or something like that. Um, so basically I wanted to do it about my hobbies and things that I enjoyed and I called it my life in med school. Uh, but then when I graduated med school, I was no longer in med school, so that title no longer applied. So that's when I kind of transitioned it into my life in medicine because that's really what I write about and what I film about and what I talk about in my social media. I talk about the things that I enjoy and I like to show other people that you can be a person, you can have hobbies, you can be yourself, you can have a personality um, while being a physician. So that was basically my goal. What What's your favorite quote? That's a hard one. Um, I really like the one she believed she could, so she did. Um, I feel like that's a really empowering quote and it kind of reinforces the fact that women have for years been told they can't do things because they're a woman or been minimized or belittled because of being a woman or being a mom and I believe women and men can do whatever they want in life if they set their minds to it and they work towards that so that quote really just inspires me and that was the first thing that came to mind right now. <laughs> Best memory in medical school? Um, I have a lot. But I would have to say one of my best memories in medical school is how I met one of my friends, one of my best friends from best friends from medical school who's getting married um, next week. And I don't know, it's just super funny. Um, so it was orientation week and we were getting ready for our white coat ceremony. So we had to go to rehearse like where we're going to stand and how the line's going to go and everything like that. Um, but not everybody, not everybody had a car or knew how to get there and there was limited parking. So I kind of knew my way around the town a little bit. So I offered to whoever wanted a ride um, that they could ride with me. And this girl said, okay, I'll ride with you. We had been talking in the classroom. Um, so she kind of just like trusted me and got in my car. Well, we put the GPS, because I'd never gone to that specific um, school in town, and then we got lost. And some people were following us, so it was even funnier that these people were like, oh, she knows her way around town, so I'm going to follow her. And then we got lost, because I was using my GPS, and the GPS was taking us to a different place. Um, and literally every day after that, we were pretty much inseparable. Um, she is such a great person. She is finally graduating, um, from med school. She is applying to residency and I know she's going to be a beautiful bride and a, an amazing physician. So that is one of my fondest memories. Um, and we were just talking about it when I saw her a few weeks ago. Um, it's just incredible how such a strong friendship can Rat, like begin from like getting lost in a car on your way to your white coat ceremony. So what's one course you struggled with? Pharmacology. Flat out, I hated pharmacology. I was so bad at it. It just, for some reason, it just, the like mechanisms of how the drugs worked and the names and the classes and it all, it was just a lot of information that you kind of had to memorize and I'm really bad at memorizing. I'm really good at analyzing things and coming to conclusions and putting things together. I'm really, really good at that. But memorizing stuff is like my biggest 
weakness. I am so, so bad at memorizing stuff. So I really struggled with pharmacology. What's your favorite book? All the Harry Potter books are my favorite books. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I also really like the House of an, mm, Chosen, House of Night. It's a series about vampires, but it's got like 12 books and I think I got to book eight. Versus Harry Potter, I've read all of them and I love them and I can reread them and I love the movies and I just love everything about Harry Potter. What do you do in your free time? YouTube, Instagram. Um, I used to spend a lot of time doing my blog, photography, playing with my cat and dog, attempting to cook interesting things, but I always end up cooking the same things, but I try. It's important. I at least try. I, I try to cook. I really love cooking, but I just have like zero creative energy and I have little time. Um, so usually when I get home and I want to make something that takes me three hours, I have, in three hours I'll be in bed. So I have to cook simple things. What do you want to major or specialize in? Well, I already said it. I'm doing obstetrics and gynecology. Um, it's a four-year residency program and I'm halfway through my second year, so almost halfway there. I'm not sure if I want to subspecialize. I don't know if I want to do something more specific after I finish residency. Um, Sometimes I like the idea of doing maternal fetal medicine. I like some things about reproductive endocrinology and infertility. And then other times I really just want to be a generalist and kind of do a little bit of everything and then eventually just work in labor and delivery and bring beautiful babies into the world. Who do you look up to? This is a hard question. I look up to a lot of people. But if I had to choose like right now, one of the people that I most admire is Dr. Natalie Crawford on Instagram. She is a reproductive endocrinologist and infertility specialist who has a, an amazing podcast called As a Woman. And she is just such a beautiful human being. She is such an inspiration to girls and women everywhere in any specialty, any career that no matter what life throws at you, you can succeed and you can come out um, successful at the end of the tunnel. And she is doing some great things with so many other amazing women and they are definitely very good role models for me right now. How do you study productively? Hmm. I study in very random ways. I, like I mentioned in one of my other videos, sometimes I study while watching TV. I kind of grew up with that bad habit, but I kind of need that white noise in the background um, to kind of be able to focus. But when I really, really, really need to, I just put on some relaxing music and I just kind of like get in the groove and hide myself in a room and disconnect from everything I I block my phone, I block my computer, and that's kind of how it goes. I, um, I had some really bad study habits, so I'm trying to get better, um, especially studying for our in-training exams and um, in two and a half years preparing for boards. So how do you stay motivated in medical school or I guess in my case now it's residency? And it really is my patience. Um, even when I'm having like a really bad day and I'm wondering like, man, um, do I really want to do this? Is this really what I want to do for the rest of my life? Can I do this? Can I survive this? Um, I get like a really, I get a really good experience with my patients and I forget about all that. Especially when I'm on labor and delivery, I could be having the worst day. I could be exhausted, I could be sick and feel awful. And when I'm there, all of that, I kind of just forget about it. And I have such good patient interactions and it's so rewarding that it, it just makes me want to keep moving forward every day. And um, the last question is, what are your best tips for future, future medical students? So, 
I have a lot of tips and tricks for medical students on my blog. I will try to link some of them in the description box below. But my best advice is to think about how you feel and what makes you happy. And because that's what's gonna, what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. That's how you're gonna survive your training. Residency is hard. It's, it sucks your soul sometimes. It's exhausting. There is a lot of drama sometimes. And the only way that you're gonna get through is if you, if you love what you do. If you love what you do, then nothing else matters. The system wants to make you feel like you are a number and that's all that you are and that's all that matters, but it's not. At the end of the day, you could have the highest ward score and be a really bad doctor and you could have the worst numbers and barely pass um, but you can also be a great physician so yes it can make it harder to get into residency but if you didn't pass a class if you had to repeat it if you had to retake a step if you had to take an extra year it doesn't matter because at the end of the at the end of the day you are still a doctor you are still able to provide care and you can still contribute to healthcare and helping others. So I would say just trust yourself and follow your instinct, follow your heart and you will make it. Maybe it'll take a different path, maybe it'll take a few more years, but you will still make it. It will be totally worth it. So don't give up. I believe in all of you guys. I truly, truly do. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the little subscribe button down below and um, follow me on social media. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.